the name It's 10% luck, 20% skill, 15% concentrated power of will 5% pleasure, 50% pain, 100% reason to remember the name so with the Toronto Raptors and the Golden State Warriors in the NBA Finals and almost the end of the season, I thought of an idea where we look at all 30 teams and look at 10 players that you may not have known or may have forgotten about who actually played for that certain team. So obviously with the Raptors and Warriors heading into game number 6, we're going to look at both the Raptors and the Warriors, but in this video we're going to look at the Warriors and in the next episode of this series we'll look at the Raptors. But I want you guys to let me know which team you want after that and I think it's just a good way to get some NBA content when it's the off season and there is no basketball anymore. So that's the plan for this series. And this series will be done when we've gone through all 30 NBA teams. Anyway, before I get started, if you like this idea, let me know by hitting that like button. Also, be sure to comment on which team you'd want me to do next. So without further ado, let's look at 10 players who you may have forgotten about playing for the Golden State Warriors. And let's see how many of these guys you get right. And be honest in the comment section. Number 10, Ralph Sampson. He's number 10, but many people don't realize that apart from being one of the top spots on the what could have been list and the Houston Rockets first overall pick in the 1983 NBA draft, he was also a part of the Golden State Warriors from 1987 till 1989. Samson's incredible size and unnatural agility for a man that was 7 foot 4 is just insane. He was able to burst on the NBA scene as a rookie, averaging 21 points, 11 rebounds, 2 assists, 2.5 blocks per game in his first season. He was also named an All-Star and won the NBA Rookie of the Year award. But he was injured halfway into the 1987-88 season, which unfortunately was not uncommon for Samson. Evident through his name being one that people just remember for what could have been with Hakeem Olajuwon after making the finals in 1986. The Twin Towers were meant to do big things, but it just wasn't meant to be. Samson's knee and back troubles worsened and he never played a full season in the remaining years of his career. He was only able to average 6.4 points and 5 rebounds with the Golden State Warriors in 1988-89. Number 9, Muggsy Bogues. Everyone loves Muggsy. I mean, how can you not love Muggsy Bogues? People remember him for his time in Charlotte with Larry Johnson and Alonzo Mourning. After all, Bogues settled in Charlotte. He established himself in Charlotte as an exceptional passer, a great stealer, one of the fastest players on the court, and a fan favorite. Bogues spent 10 years in Charlotte as a Hornet, led by Mourning and Johnson, and they became one of the most popular teams in the NBA. But Muggsy Bogues also played for the Golden State Warriors, averaging 5.5 points and 5 assists as a Warrior, and then signed later as a free agent with the Raptors, as we all know. Number 8, Terry Cummings. If you don't know who Terry Cummings is, you should, because in my opinion, he's one of the most underrated players that I know of. He's a top 50 scorer of all time. He was a rookie of the year who averaged 23 points, 10.4 rebounds, which is insane. He was averaging 16.6 points and 7 rebounds through his 17 year NBA career until he joined the Warriors, in which he averaged 9 points and 5 rebounds a game for his first season and then 8 points and 5 rebounds in his last season before retiring. He's obviously best known on his time with the Bucks, where he made the All-Star team twice and obviously had a great career with the Spurs as well, but many people forget or don't even know about him playing for the Golden State Warriors. Number 7, Richard Jefferson. This is one of those guys where we just think of him and remember his time in Cleveland because he won a championship beating the Warriors and it almost seems a little bit weird seeing him in a Warriors jersey, considering the Cavs-Warriors rivalry in the last few years was insane. It's one that is just easy to forget he even played for them, as he averaged less than 5 points in his time in Golden State. In the end, he was an integral part of the Cavaliers though, who actually beat the Warriors despite being down 3 games to 1. The first team in NBA history to come back being down 3 games to 1. And Richard Jefferson, even over 35 years old, was a huge part in that team and a great player coming off the bench. And his dunk on Klay Thompson? Still insane. Number 6, Robert Parrish. Obviously, he was best known for his time at the Celtics. He spent 14 seasons there and won four NBA championships with thanks to Larry Bird, Kevin McHale, and the rest of the team. But he was also a part of the Warriors. In fact, they're the team that drafted him. Parrish was drafted in the first round of the 1976 NBA draft by the Golden State Warriors, but at that time, he had also been drafted by the Utah Stars in the 1973 ABA Special League. And he was also drafted by the Spurs in the 1975 ABA draft as well. Don't ask me how that works, just go with it. 
Paris signed with the Warriors in the end, and the Warriors were NBA champions in 1975, two years prior to Paris's rookie season campaign. However, when Paris joined the Warriors, their decline began immediately. They missed the entire playoffs completely from 1978 to 1980, and then he became a member of the Boston Celtics. Number 5, John Starks. Okay, so did you know that Starks played for the Warriors? If you did, did you know he played for them twice, in two different occasions? Although he was passed over in the 1988 NBA Draft, Starks signed with the Golden State Warriors in September of 1988 as a free agent. This was his rookie year. The thing is, if you know the Golden State Warriors, you know that the 1988 Draft was a special one because they drafted shooting guard Mitch Richmond as well, with the 5th overall pick. Which meant that Starks played limited minutes in only 36 games, while Richmond won Rookie of the Year. But in the second stint with the Warriors in 1999, he averaged about 14 points and 5 assists and was actually pretty solid before he left. Number 4, Jamal Crawford. Because Jamal Crawford hasn't aged a day since joining the NBA in the year 2000, apart from a few more tattoos, this image of him in a Warriors jersey almost looks photoshopped, but it's not. And to be honest, they're actually a team that should be targeting him again next season. Crawford only played in 54 games for the Warriors, but he did start in all of them, averaging nearly 20 points a game with 4.4 assists and 1.5 rebounds. But because the Warriors did not qualify for the playoffs in the 2008-09 season, they traded Crawford to the Atlanta Hawks. The Warriors did go on to draft Curry that year, so I guess it turned out alright. Number 3. Can I just mention one guy's name who I think is one of the most underrated players of, of our era, who nobody ever talks about anymore, is Mark Price. He was oh, yeah. so good. You remember how Hardest good? Hardest to check on the pick and roll. He was split oh, the pick and roll. Man. He created the split. Mark Price has been known as one of the most underrated point guards of all time. He's a four-time All-Star. He's a two-time NBA three-point contest winner. He's part of the 50-40-90 club. He's got his jersey retired by the Cleveland Cavaliers. He was a really, really good player. He was obviously best known as a Cleveland Cavalier with four of his all-star appearances being with the Cavaliers. And Mark Price actually revolutionized the way that people attack on the screen and roll. He was the first guy who really split the screen and roll and everybody knew that if they were up against Mark Price, it was going to be a tough night because he was seriously good. Anyway, he actually ended up on the Golden State Warriors in the 1996-1997 NBA season, where he averaged 11 points and 5 assists with a steal per game. He shot 90% from the free throw line, almost 40% from three, and about 45% from the field. So he was extremely efficient, just as he was his entire career. But I reckon a lot of people never knew that Price actually was a warrior at one point. Number two, Nick Van Exel. Most will probably remember Nick Van Exel from his Laker days. I mean, this guy crossed up plays, had a smooth left hand jump shot, but Van Exel also spent some time in Golden State as well. In fact, he spent 39 games there. Van Exel was traded in August of 2003 to the Golden State Warriors during the 03-04 season. He played in a career low 39 games, averaging 12.6 points and 5.3 assists. Van Exel was a veteran by the time he got to the Warriors, having spent most of the late 90s with the Lakers and the early 2000s with the Nuggets and the Dallas Mavericks even before then. Obviously, it was a big demotion for Van Exel as he went from a playoff contender with the Dallas Mavericks to a team that had the longest playoff drought in the NBA at the time which obviously that made Van Exel kind of not want to play for the Warriors considering he was almost about to win an NBA championship, at least try to. Number one, Chris Webber. Chris Webber. Now, you probably know about Chris Webber playing for the Warriors. I mean, he got drafted there. He had a crazy move on Charles Barkley behind the back, yammed it in his face. I mean, we all know that the Orlando Magic passed up on Chris Webber and they chose Penny Hardaway instead, pairing Shaq and Penny instead of Shaq and Webber, but this isn't this time. This isn't the 1993 rookie Chris Webber playing for the Golden State Warriors. This is the Golden State Warriors Chris Webber of the year 2008. 15 years after he got drafted there, Warriors fans are probably still upset over the fact that Webber did not play his prime years in Golden State because he immediately after his rookie season left the team because he didn't like the coach. Anyway, he finished where he started as he got drafted to Golden State and retired in Golden State. He only played 9 games for the Warriors averaging 3.9 points, 3.6 rebounds in 14 minutes per game. 
And that's it. That's 10 players you may have forgotten about playing for the Golden State Warriors. And with that said, if you guys enjoyed this video, please be sure to subscribe for more. Be sure to leave a like and follow me on Instagram. That would be much appreciated. We are so close to 250,000 subscribers. But let's see if we can reach 1,000 likes for the next episode of this series, which will be on the Toronto Raptors. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out some of my other videos. And I am out. Peace.